first name is Minnie Jean Brown, Elizabeth Eckford, Ernest Green, Green. Thelma Mothershed, Melba Patillo, Gloria Ray, Terrence Roberts, Roberts, Jefferson Thomas, and Collado Walls. When I hear the Little Rock Nine, I think of history. I think of all the obstacles that we've come through as a country. Bravery, integrity, heart. It's kind of hard to really grasp what they went through. I think they were very courageous in what they did. You know, it was a, a time-changing moment. I feel like it was, it was very harsh towards them because they were trying to, you know, get a better education. Yeah, I was born in a small town called Helena, Arkansas, which is about two and a half hours from Little Rock. Um, I think my earliest memories of the Little Rock Nine was like around sixth grade. They started, you know, of course it was around uh, Black History Month. You know, everybody knew about the, you know, the Mount Rushmore of uh, Black History. And then they introduced the Little Rock Nine to us. In 1954, the Supreme Court ruled that uh, through Brown versus the Board of Education, which was led by Thurgood Marshall, that segregation in schools was wrong and that it was time to integrate. And as we all know, a lot of southern states felt like this was wrong when it came to Arkansas. They had already had some of the schools integrated, but they wanted to integrate Central, Little Rock Central. And at that time, it was like, one of the best schools in the nation. And um, at first there were 17 African Americans that volunteered to go to Central. And uh, some of them dropped out as close as the time came to go to school as, you know, for fear for their life and uh, their parents losing their jobs and stuff like that. So the nine that went to go, of course you're gonna get people, you know, hitting on you and spitting at you and throwing stuff at you, but you know, you, this is your purpose, and you have to complete the goal. And the goal was to further your education and get into the school. And when I think of those children, those innocent children who just wanted an education, they had not done anything else wrong, they just wanted to learn. It makes me so angry. And it breaks my heart that that's where we were as a country. And these moments in history that we see that are hard to fathom that I can't imagine living through, but others did, and they've come through it. And it's just, it's heartbreaking to see that that's how we used to treat people, just based on the color of their skin. Governor Oval Forbes, he brought in the National Guard, and, to, and his warriors were to keep the peace and keep down the violence. So he uh, brought the National Guard in, and they kept the Little Rock Nine from getting into the school. The president and the executive branch of government will support and ensure the carrying out of the decisions of the federal courts. So that's where, where Eisenhower came in with the, the military at that point in time. He came to the school and said that they would literally walk the Little Rock Nine into school to make sure that they got in safely. Um, but I guess that kind of goes back to with them having to struggle because once they got into school, it was, you know, not under their protection at that point in time. And we don't even know the half of what happened to them inside that school. Um, so just to see what they went through and how far that we've come from that because of them, I'm just, I'm forever thankful and grateful. So we have a special opportunity here at Shipbuilders to do something that no one else does. We build nuclear-powered warships. And um, with the Arkansas, we have an even more special opportunity. Our sponsor is the Little Rock Nine. And to be able to honor them and to remember that history, it almost brings a new sense of pride into what we do. I'm proud. Like, I, I, like, I don't even want the submarine to, to, to leave the building. You know, because it's like, wow, like I'm, I'm really working on uh, a new Virginia-class submarine by the name of Arkansas that's got some meaning behind it. 
I mean, I feel proud of my heart because I, I take pride in my job, what I do, because I know that my grandkids can serve on this ship. I, I'm very proud of what I do. Uh, it's a good feeling knowing that I, I put my hand, heart, and soul into that, and it's, it's a good feeling. You know, me being in the sixth grade, lear just learning about nine courageous African Americans, Little Rock Nine, who stepped forward and took their place in the history books. And it's amazing that what we're doing here, as me and my fellowship builders are bringing Arkansas SSN 800 to life. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, and welcome to the keel laying ceremony for Virginia Class Submarine Arkansas, SSN 800. I'm Christy Miller, Director of Communications for Newport News Shipbuilding, and it's my pleasure to welcome you today and to introduce our platform guests. If everyone would please rise as the official party takes its place on the platform. Please welcome Captain Hannah Crewalt, Commanding Officer, Supervisor of Shipbuilding, Newport News. The Honorable Elaine Luria, 2nd Congressional District, Virginia. Rear Admiral Jonathan Rucker, Program Executive Officer, Attack Submarines, United States Navy. Vice Admiral William Houston, Commander, Naval Submarine Forces, United States Navy. The Honorable Bobby Scott, 3rd Congressional District, Virginia. And now, Introducing members of the Little Rock Nine. Please welcome Ms. Thelma Mothershed Ware, accompanied by Commander Vincent Conkey, Commanding Officer of Submarine Arkansas. Ms. Gloria Ray Carlmark. Mr. Ernest Green. Ms. Carlotta Walls Lanier. And Ms. Elizabeth Eckford, accompanied by Newport News Shipbuilding President, Ms. Jennifer Boykin. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the national anthem performed by Newport News shipbuilder, Ms. Stephanie Poole. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched we're so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. 
Ladies and gentlemen, to deliver today's invocation, please welcome Lieutenant Philip Kaufman, Navy Chaplain. Let us pray. Mighty Creator, we are thankful to you for a beautiful day to witness time-honored naval traditions, such as the laying of a ship's keel. Unified and grateful, we stand together to bind our allegiance to our nation and her allies as the construction begins for the future USS Arkansas. Together as shipbuilders, ship sponsors, leaders, sailors, and citizens of our great nation, we celebrate new life in the greatest naval fleet the world has ever known. Life as we know it began at your command. It became alive when you shaped, formed, and breathed into everything. Today we stand in awe of knowing you stand at the helm of every adventure we embark. And as we signal for life to begin for the USS Arkansas, may we humbly remember her future journeys into the watery depths of your oceans pales in comparison to you. And finally, God of all, we ask your blessing upon each set of hands, every eye, and the years of compiled experience that will assemble this vessel. Keep her keel eternally strong, and may all who sail in her hull always be found faithful to our Navy, our nation, and to you. Amen. Please be seated. And now, please welcome Newport News Shipbuilding President, Ms. Jennifer Boykin. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Newport News Shipbuilding. Distinguished platform guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us as we lay the keel for Virginia-class submarine SSN 800, Arkansas. I want to give a special thanks to Lieutenant Philip Kaufman for delivering the invocation, U.S. Fleet Forces Band Brass Quintet, and our national anthem singer, shipbuilder Stephanie Poole for bringing your talents and your heart with us this morning. Thank you all. I'm happy to welcome shipbuilding and Navy leadership here with us today including Acting Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Research, Development, and Acquisition, Mr. Jay Stephanie. We are also joined by state and community leaders, including Virginia Lieutenant Governor Winsome Earl Sears, Hampton Mayor Donnie Tuck, Newport News Mayor-elect Philip Jones, who will assume office in January, and Newport News Mayor McKinley Price, who will leave office in December after a dedicated 12 years of service to our community. Thank you very much, Mayor Price, for your service. Also with us today are friends and partners from the Navy League of Hampton Roads and our region's community colleges. Thank you all for being here today. The Keel Lang Ceremony is a time-honored tradition that dates back to the first ship built for the United States Navy. When ships were built from the bottom up, the central timber was laid down to signify the start of ship construction. With advances in shipbuilding, we no longer begin with that traditional keel, but we continue commemorating this milestone by welding the sponsor's initials to steel plates that will be permanently affixed to the ship. And while all ship milestones carry significance for shipbuilders, the Navy, and our supplier community, today's event is especially historic because for the first time, we are honoring a record nine heroes who will share a unique bond with SSN 800. The video that kicked off today's ceremony gives us a glimpse into their powerful history and their powerful story and their courageous spirit that will forever inspire Arkansas and her crew. We saw nine teenagers who knowingly went into harm's way to pave the way for others and help ignite a civil rights movement. This group forever changed our, nat our nation's history 
and their submarine will help ensure their legacy continues. We are honored to have many of them here with us today, so please join me in giving a very warm welcome to the members of the Little Rock Nine. Also extremely honored to be here representing more than 25,000 shipbuilders from Newport News who make history every day by building the strongest, most capable Navy fleet the world has ever known. As shipbuilders, we develop a bond with every ship that we touch, creating a connection with her, with her namesake, with her sponsors, and with her crew. Each ship is special and some trace their origins to extraordinary story from our nation's tapestry. And as you heard from our shipbuilders in this morning's video, this submarine and her sponsors are here to ignite our hearts. The bravery and resilience of the Little Rock Nine sparked a fire of change and demonstrated the strength of blending different perspectives and backgrounds. We harness, this ship, we harness this strength in our shipyard every day because our diversity allows us to extend beyond our individual limits, to reach new heights, and to build each boat better than the one before. Arkansas will be proof of this power. The Virginia class program comp comprises thousands of dedicated shipbuilders from both Newport News and General Dynamics Electric Boat, along with thousands of suppliers from across the nation. These dedicated women and men work tirelessly alongside our Navy partners to build enormous modules like the one for Arkansas behind me. And they assemble them to create a workplace, a home, and a shield for our Navy sailors. Their collective effort will bring Arkansas to life and prepare her to become the newest, strongest member of the silent service. It's an honorable calling and, as you witnessed from our shipbuilders in the video, one that we take pride in every day. I know the Arkansas shipbuilding team will reflect the impact that the Little Rock Nine made. We will never forget their bravery nor the bravery demonstrated by our sailors who protect freedoms for all Americans every day. Together, we will build a submarine worthy of the Little Rock Nine and their story. Our next speaker is no stranger to Virginia-class submarines. He served as the lead ship coordinator for the first of class USS Virginia's post-shakedown availability and as the Virginia Waterfront Coordinator in charge of seven Virginia-class boats. He then reported to the Program Executive Office submarines as part of the Virginia Program Office. In June, he became the Program Executive Officer for attack submarines, overseeing seven programs, offices, and directorates across all aspects of fast attack submarines. We're proud to support these programs and and to partner with the Navy and leaders like him, please welcome Rear Admiral Jonathan Rucker. It's great to see everybody. Um, I'm really energized to be here today to celebrate the milestone of the future USS Arkansas. So whenever I go to speak, I always try to figure out some you know, fun facts or interesting things. So I, I, I looked up Arkansas in the last day or so, and. Uh, Number one attraction in Arkansas, if you didn't know, was the Hot Springs National Park. So I thought that, you know, today being a little bit cold, that might be an interesting fact. And the other thing, I don't know if Newport News is going to serve it at the reception, but the most famous food is the possum pie. So you, you, you all joke, and I said, when I looked that up, I'm like, what the heck is the possum pie? And it is a crust with chocolate custard, whipped cream, and pecans. So it's probably not that bad. Don't, don't think the possum. But... Uh, I'm especially honored to share this day with the five members of the Little Rock Nine, including four of the ship's sponsors. 
their strength and bravery that you demonstrated leading our nation toward a better future represents the very best of who we can be and is a fitting inspiration for the sailors who will crew this boat, as well as the shipyard workers who are building it now and will maintain it in the future. In our Navy, the tradition runs deep as the oceans we operate in. As Jennifer outlined, the keel laying ceremony is a symbolic coming together of the industry that is building the submarine, the Navy that will operate the submarine, and the American people as represented by the ship sponsors we see here today. I know in the program you can see that the nuclear-powered submarine will be the fifth vessel named after the great state of Arkansas, the most recent being the guided missile cruiser, which served up until 1998. When you look at Virginia class, it truly does take the will of a nation to design, build, and operate a, formable, a platform as formidable as the USS Arkansas, which will be the 27th Virginia class submarine. The boats in this class are the most advanced attack submarines ever designed. Their stealth, firepower, and maneuverability are superior to every other attack submarine in the world and are a critical component of our Navy's ability to maintain peace and stability in an ever-changing world environment. We would not be able to do what we do without the dedication and skilled labor of our shipyard workers and our supply base. The strong, enduring partnerships between the Navy and defense industry, which are built on decades of proven and continued success, are key components to building and maintaining a strong, ready, and capable fleet, able to counter any potential adversaries on the ever-changing world stage. Thank you to the Newport News team for your dedication day in and day out building our nation's submarines. This is hard work. It is physically difficult. It takes incredible talent and skill, and it's absolutely vital to the defense of our country. Together, we build the most powerful warships ever known, thereby ensuring the men and women of our U.S. Navy can fight in any and win in any threat environment. Today is a momentous occasion, not just for the shipbuilders who will pour their considerable skills into building the submarine, but also for the sailors who will deploy aboard Arkansas and patrol the ocean's deeps in service of our, na our nation and our way of life. May the example of fortitude, resiliency, steadfastness, and bravery set for us by the ship's sponsors guide and inspire the men and women of the silent service who serve aboard this vessel. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be part of this ceremony. Thank you. Thank you, Admiral Rucker. Our next speaker serves a critical role for our nation's submarine fleet. As commander of the U.S. Navy's submarine forces, he is the undersea domain lead and responsible for the force's strategic vision. He also serve, oversees all Atlantic-based submarines, their crews, and supporting shore activities, and is the principal undersea warfare advisor to all NATO strategic commanders. His Navy career has taken him coast to coast and around the world, serving in Kings Bay, Georgia, San Diego, California, and with the U.S. Naval Forces Europe, Africa, just to name a few. We are grateful to have him here with us today at Newport News Shipbuilding. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Vice Admiral Bill Houston. Hey, it's uh, just a great honor to be out here. Um, I can tell you, uh, I was worried about it being brisk, but uh, with these heaters back here, it is like uh, deep South Florida right now. It's that hot. Um, if any of you are cold, inch up, because there's plenty of heat coming up here. So we need to get these installed on the bridges of our submarines operating out of Groton and Portsmouth, New Hampshire right now. So uh, it's uh, truly a tremendous honor, and I'm very humbled to be up here with members of Little Rock Nine. It's not lost on me that the Navy core values of honor, courage, and commitment are embodied with a Little Rock Nine. And what you bring, and Jennifer, the video demonstrated it, a little part of the shipyard and a huge part of the sponsors become part of the Arkansas. And that will be carried forward with great pride and commitment from the Navy crew that serves, and we thank you for that.
we can all grasp the importance of the submarine force looking at these impressive facilities. You just look around you. The caliber, the craftsmanship, detail from the workers that give it their all every single day to build these incredibly complex warfighting machines. It's simply amazing. I know your work is often stressful and difficult, but I'm here to tell you as commander of the submarine forces, thank you. What you do and the impact you have on our country is immeasurable. All of you have had direct contributions to protecting our nation. You've designed and built a fleet of Virginia-class submarines that are the cutting edge of technology, craftsmanship, and absolute skill. Because of you, our nation's submariners stand ready and able to leverage this instrument of national power to its full potential and to compete and win across all warfare domains when called upon. Almost 45 years ago, this same shipyard laid down the nuclear cruiser Arkansas. And it's not lost on me that there's potentially some of those same shipyard workers here who laid down the Arkansas, the cruiser, are still here supporting the Virginia class build program. And that Arkansas was around for 20 years and this Arkansas is gonna be around a lot longer than that. It's protecting America and that cruiser Arkansas protected it against the Soviet Union. Now, USS Arkansas, when it's commissioned, will be protecting against any adversaries. Today, we have different threats that PCU Arkansas will rise to meet head on. We have two near peer competitors attempting to contest us in all domains. There are challenging times for submarines to compete in, but we have never been afraid of competition. We meet our challenges head on. We do not shy away from challenges, especially when it comes to securing our national interests and defending our national values. This shipyard, its workers, and our submarine force sailors are gonna to continue to deal with those dangers in the coming decade of maximum danger. With advances in sound silencing, acoustics, and weapons delivery system, Arkansas will traverse the world's oceans and seas as a hunter killer, invisibly lurking in the shadows, representing our asymmetric advantage in the undersea domain. Arkansas has no equal. Arkansas will be the tip of the spear for more than 30 years. The ship and its crew will be asked to deploy forward into harm's way to accomplish national and fleet tasking and deliver lethal effects if called upon to defend this great nation. Some nations are looking to challenge a post-World War peace that we had that was wrought from the greatest generation. They are continuing attempt to challenge America and Western democracies' influence in the world. They are trying to weaken our resolve. They are trying to challenge that democracy. They will find no weakness from the USS Arkansas. Every day when leaders of these potential adversaries wake up, they ask them, say, if today is the day that they're gonna test, uh, test American resolve and American democracy, and I'm here to tell you that the submariners that go to work every day on shore and sea and provide the leaders to answer that question, today, these submariners are holding that line and today is not the day you wanna test American will. The Virginia-class shipbuilding program, PCU Arkansas, and the 25,000 sailors that bring the submarine force to life will continue to hold that line that we held in World War II. I'm confident that we will not cede a single inch to any potential adversaries in our lifetimes. In closing, I am incredibly honored and humbled to be here on this historic day with you and so many great Americans. Godspeed to the workers and sailors of U.S. Arkansas as you set the foundation and standard for warfighting excellence. And I look forward to seeing the Arkansas on patrol as the apex predator with nothing to fear on the sea, under the sea. Thank you very much. We are very fortunate to have a strong Virginia delegation that supports our industry and our shipbuilders. This includes Congresswoman Elaine Loria, 
who serves Virginia's 2nd District and is no stranger to Newport News shipbuilding. Congresswoman, thank you for joining us today. Speaking on behalf of Virginia's delegation this morning is a leader who always puts our workers first. He was recently reelected to his 16th term in the U.S. House of Representatives, and we are proud to be located in his district. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Congressman Bobby Scott. Thank you, President Boykin, for your kind introduction, distinguished platform guests, Lieutenant Governor Sears, and other civilian leaders, military leaders, shipbuilders, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's certainly a pleasure to be here with my distinguished colleague from the 2nd Congressional District, Elaine Luria. For four years, she has been a very effective advocate for men and women in uniform and for shipbuilding. So please give Elaine Luria another round of applause. Um, this is uh, today we have another opportunity to recognize the great work of Newport News shipbuilding. The keel laying of a new vessel is a momentous occasion built on centuries of naval tradition and the Arkansas will be another strong link in that chain. As the proudest new addition to the United States Navy, I have no doubt that the Arkansas and its crew will go on to exceed all of our expectations. As a Virginia-class submarine, the Arkansas's latest addition <coughs> is a Virginia-class submarine. The Arkansas represents the latest that the Navy has to offer, both technologically and militarily. And construction follows the Newport News shipbuilding's tradition of building good ships. Today's ceremony also gives us an opportunity to acknowledge the ship sponsors, the Little Rock Nine. Their historic bravery and commitment to equal educational opportunity in the face of discrimination will forever be part of our nation's history. We can only imagine how far back we would be without heroes like the Little Rock Nine. Children, as we saw in the video, children will grow up learning their stories and looking to, as, looking to them as timeless examples of courage and grace under pressure, and it could not be more fitting that we are honoring them today. Now, I've personally known one of the Little, Little Rock Nine for a long time, Ernie Green. I serve on the, uh, for many years on the Education and Labor Committee and I frequently rely on Ernie's expertise because at one time he served as sec Assistant Secretary at the U.S. Department of Labor. So thank you, Ernie, for all of that help and expertise. All of us here today can thank the Little Rock Nine for serving this country in their own way through hard-fought advancement of civil rights that we all as Americans deserve. I'm now proud to serve as a representative from Newport News and its shipyard in Congress. There is important, innovative work done here every day that affects our nation's national security. Uh, so I commend all of the shipbuilders for their hard work that has already been done so far on the Arkansas and for the hard work yet to come. Cheers to this great effort and another great ship. Thank you. Congressman Scott, it's always great to have you back at the shipyard. It is now my incredible honor to introduce Elizabeth Eckford. Elizabeth was chosen by her fellow Little Rock Nine to speak on their behalf. Miss Eckford was just 15 years old when she made history at Central High. Her bravery guided her through high school and beyond when she graduated college and served five years in the United States Army. She recently published a book about her time at Central, and she travels to talk about her experience. We are so excited to have her with us here today, so please give a warm welcome to Miss Elizabeth Eckford.
Good morning. When we were named sponsors for the submarine Arkansas 800, I knew little about the Navy and its traditions. Secretary Ray Mavis asked us to be supporters of the ship and its crew. I saw it signed on to be a foster grandmother. From movies, submarines seemed to be more than ordinary sailors. When we were teens, President Eisenhower sent 1,000 paratroopers to Little Rock to disperse a mob, bring order, and they made it possible for us to enter Central High School. From that point, I have had very high regards for specially trained forces. Our soldier guards withdrew, and the federalized National Guardsmen followed us through the hallways. The students laughed at them. The 101st troops had to come back and give them some training. Nevertheless, we walked a gauntlet of hate throughout the school year. I was in the Army during the Vietnam War. At Fort Lewis, Washington, I saw war-weary soldiers who had been plucked from jungles and sent stateside where they looked like they were living dead and were discharged within 24 hours after landing in the United States. This military industrial complex builds carriers and submarines, weapons of war. Hopefully, America's big stick and the certainty of mutual assured destruction and diplomacy will keep the peace. George Herbert said that war is death's feast. President Abraham Lincoln called it that attractive rainbow that rises in showers of blood. Work started on the Arkansas 800 in 2018. The design has been evolving. Adjustments were called for during COVID, workforce interruptions, and supply chain challenges. This company is the largest employer in Virginia, and it, it is the largest um, shipbuilding in the United States. Um, but m most of what I have learned since I've been here has been from briefings from the military and from the communications group and from the shipbuilders themselves. I'm extremely impressed by the challenges that individuals have taken up to build their careers. Um, and I'm going to uh, point out some examples of that. America's defense is based upon space, air, land, and sea services. Steadfastness, resilience, and acceptance of self-challenges prompted many to pursue further education and training. Most of what I know about Norfolk and the area has been provided by the communications group here, the naval officers and employees. And I want to especially thank the communications group. You've made us ex extremely welcome and uh, our experience here has been unique. It has been 65 years since we were in, in high school, but uh, in a in our latter half of our, our uh, lives, we've had some very, very unique experiences. Our singer today started Newport News as a production uh, uh, person, but she uh, uh, was promoted when she received her uh, AA degree, and she went on to get a bachelor's degree and also a master's degree. And she's typical of the crews here in, in that um, devotion to education and training. My welder has been here many years. Many of the shipbuilders have been here many years, which speaks to positively to the environment here. Commander Conkey enlisted in the, in the Navy as a submarine sonar technician. He graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering. He also has a Master's in Financial Man Management. He's typical of the leadership here. Captain Conkey, I'm sorry, Captain Crewald, uh, 
received a degree in oceanography from the Naval Academy, and we know that the service academies are, are extremely challenging. Um, and he also earned a Master's of Science in Engineering Acoustics. Vice Admiral Houston has a degree in Electrical Engineering and holds a Master's of Business Administration. He commands all Atlantic-based submarines. And he is a principal undersea warfare advisor in the, to the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Um, from the uh, Congresswoman Elaine Luria spent two decades in the Navy. And she retired as a commander. She's the first woman to serve the entirety of her career in combat, combatant ships. Um, she's a graduate of the Naval Academy and received a master's in engineering. But I'm most impressed by Jennifer Boykin. She is president of the largest industrial employer in Virginia. She has a master's degree in engineering management from George Washington University. But she started off um, as the first woman to serve, or she has become the first woman to serve as president of Newport News Shipbuilding. And I have met many other workers who um, have uh, taken individual challenges to build their careers. I'm really, really impressed. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ms. Eckford. I'm going to uh, just call an audible on that, and I would like to ask all the shipbuilders to please stand so we can appropriately recognize you. Eckford, it's so inspiring to have you and your classmates with us. And so now, the moment that you've all been waiting for, the authentication of the keel of the submarine Arkansas. First, I want to introduce the special shipbuilders who will weld the initials of the Little Rock Nine. Serving in this role are Brian Jackson, Jessica Lawson, Brandon Leggett, Phyllis Young, Anthony Varola, and Billy Williams. These welders have a combined 52 years of shipyard experience, and each of them was specifically selected for their skill and their commitment to quality. The welders will weld one set of initials each, representing our five guests of honor who are with us this morning, and the initials of Minnie Jean Brown Tricky, who was not able to attend today, but mailed her initials in ahead for the ceremony. So if you did the math, you'll notice that we have a record six sets of initials to weld, another first in Newport News history. And we hope to weld the initials of the remaining Little Rock Nine as Arkansas's construction progresses. It is said that each United States Navy ship takes on the spirit of her sponsor. With this in mind, I know the spirit of Arkansas will be unbreakable. After our sponsor's initials are signed and welded, Carlotta Walls Lanier will authenticate the keel on behalf of the Little Rock Nine. And once the ceremony ends, you are welcome to board the shuttle buses to return to our general offices building or building 520, where you are invited to attend a reception. But not yet. First, if our guests of honor will join me, let's authenticate this keel.
Welders, you ready? All right, shields up. Okay, let's see those plates. Ms. Carlotta, will you join me please at the podium? On behalf of the women and the men, of the Little Rock Nine, I hereby declare the keel of this United States Navy submarine, Arkansas, truly and fairly laid. talented welders and the Little Rock Nine today for making today so special. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremonies, but not the festivities. I hope you will join us for the reception, which by the way, includes possum pie. And we also have commemorative mugs and hot chocolate from the Little Rock, Arkansas Creamery to warm you up. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, please be safe exiting and please have a wonderful rest of your weekend.